This is Dr. Sandra Brown. I'm an ophthalmologist in North Carolina. I am a member of the board of the Dry Eye Foundation, and I have no financial disclosures. I'd like to speak to you today about preservative-free eye drops, and specifically, how to reduce the risk of bacterial contamination of the eye drop bottle. First of all, what's bacterial contamination? Well, it's pretty simple. You start with a sterile eye drop in a sterile bottle, and you end up with bacteria in that sterile eye drop. How does this happen? The first thing that happens is the bottle tip gets contaminated by contact with pretty much anything eyelid skin, eyelashes, the edges of the eyelid, the surface of the eye, or your fingers. All of these surfaces are absolutely teeming with bacteria which naturally live on the surface of the human body and to touch your skin is to touch bacteria. After the tip is contaminated, the bacteria continue to reside on that plastic tip. At the next use, you're going to squeeze a drop of your eye drop out past that contaminated tip. There's always a tiny amount of liquid on the bottle tip which gets contaminated. And then as you release the squeeze on the bottle, vacuum is going to pull that tiny bit of contaminated liquid back into the bottle itself where it comes in contact with the remaining liquid in the bottle. So this is an eye drop bottle that I have filled with a little bit of ordinary office eye wash. And earlier I took a fluorescein, which is um, our glow in the dark drop that we use in the office quite a bit. And I just painted the outside of the bottle. And I was careful not to go over the top and get any of the fluorescein down inside the, the orifice of the bottle tip right there. So what I want you to see now is I want you to see how much the drop comes in contact with the exterior surface of the tip. So I'm just going to turn it over and I'm going to squeeze a drop out. Do you see how, how quickly it turns yellow? And if we drip it off, there we go. You can see how yellowy that is from the fluorescein glowing. So I had to slow down just a little bit for the camera. But the illustration there is the extent to which a drop that's squeezed out comes in contact with the whole exterior surface of the bottom of the dropper tip and can obviously see here you got an example right there can in the same way come in contact with bacteria that are contaminating the tip. Air actually also turns out to be a source of bacterial contamination and once again when you release the squeeze on the bottle air is drawn back into the bottle in the same amount of volume as that eye drop that you squeezed out. Contamination of the bottle tip can happen to very experienced patients. I think one of the most valuable studies that illustrates this is the Purilens contamination study. Purilens is a preservative-free saline in a bottle, and it is frequently recommended as a filling solution for scleral lenses. 35 scleral lens users donated opened and partly used bottles of Purilens, and the saline was cultured, which is to say it was tested, for bacteria and fungi. It's important to note that the investigators used a needle to withdraw a sample of the saline and they bypassed the bottle tip. So they were not checking contamination for the bottle tip, but actually contamination of the leftover saline. What did they find? Well, 63% of bottles were contaminated with bacteria. Fortunately, they did not find any fungi. 34% were contaminated with multiple bacteria and they isolated 21 different bacterial species. They also found that there was no relationship between the duration of the bottle use and the likelihood of contamination. So just one inadvertent contact with an eyelash or a, a light brushing against the skin of an eyelid is enough to cause significant contamination. How are we going to prevent contamination? Well, oldie but goodie, long time use is preservatives. And I think if you're watching this video, you're probably interested in avoiding preservatives. Preservatives have many toxic effects on the surface of the eye, and it's quite legitimate to want to avoid them, especially if you're somebody who needs to use very frequent medications on the surface of your eye, whether artificial tear replacements or prescription medications. Another way to do it, single-use vials. Single-use vials uh, came along uh, after the difficulty and problems with 
preservative toxicity became more widely recognized, but they cost a fortune. And then number three, multi-dose preservative-free eye drop bottle. And this is my thumbs up right here. How does this work? Well, first of all, we want to prevent that tiny bit of contaminated liquid from being drawn back into the bottle. And so there's a spring-loaded plunger which opens when you squeeze the bottle and lets the teardrop come out and then closes again and prevents that contaminated tiny bit of fluid from being sucked back into the bottle. And then secondly, the refill air enters back into the bottle through filtered side slits, which are not uh, shown in this particular uh, illustration that of course I cribbed off the internet like everything else. Let's talk about a Frankenstein bottle. And this is really the motivation for me to put together this PowerPoint presentation and bring it to you. Frankenstein bottle is a bottle that contains a preservative free eye drop and it is combined with a regular eyedropper. And this is a setup for bottle contamination. You should expect this bottle to be contaminated just as often as a Purulence bottle, which is to say 63% of the time, no matter how skillful you are. How to identify a Frankenstein bottle? First of all, it's generally marketed as a artificial tear replacement which has no preservatives. There may not even be a tamper evident seal or a ring around that bottle. So the first question you have to ask is, is this sterile when it reaches my door? There will not be a multi-dose preservative free dropper. And also a lot of times these bottles have a fairly large drop size. And that's a problem because the larger the drop, the larger amount of room air that has to be sucked back into the bottle to prevent a vacuum from developing. Remember, just because it starts sterile does not mean that it will stay sterile. So my big message to you as an ophthalmologist is please do not drip bacteria on your eye. What are some additional risk factors for contamination? Well, they're pretty obvious. First of all, more frequent use. Every time you use that bottle, it's an opportunity for the bottle tip to become contaminated. So six times a day is going to be more risky than once a day. Using the same open bottle for weeks, once again, because you have multiple opportunities for contamination, but also because bacteria will replicate in that bottle and just naturally increase the degree of contamination. Not refrigerating the bottle after opening is definitely a risk factor. Let's think about why we refrigerate yogurt. It's to keep bacteria out of it. Well, there's already good bacteria in it. We don't want bad bacteria overgrowing it. And then also ingredients that promote bacterial growth. So bacteria like to eat amino acids, which are released when proteins break down. And some bacteria can actually cause protein breakdown. Uh, so that is definitely something to consider. What can happen to you if your bottle of eye drops become significantly contaminated? Uh, there's three possibilities. First of all, bacteria are metabolizing. They take in ingredients, they make energy, and they produce waste. And these waste products can be toxic to the surface of the eye, and they can also change the pH of that eye drop, which can make the eye drop irritating to the surface of the eye. Bacteria can cause conjunctivitis, and this photograph is a picture of bacterial conjunctivitis. And in one of the worst possible complications, you can have a bacterial corneal ulcer. If you are a scleral lens patient, then you are at particular risk because the scleral lens will trap the contaminated solution in contact with your cornea and your conjunctiva. And this may increase your risk of infection. I'd like to point out some red flags for contamination of a new type of artificial tear product on the market, the biological artificial tear. First, it may be shipped to you in a Frankenstein bottle. This is a bottle that has a regular dropper tip and the biological tear has no preservative. Secondly, it may be marketed as suitable for storage at room temperature. And third, it may be marketed as having a long duration of use after opening. I would say that anything more than 30 days is very significantly increasing your risk of a high degree of bacterial contamination. I know that there's a great deal of patient interest right now in biological artificial tear products. 
especially individuals who might benefit from using autologous serum tears but have a hard time obtaining them, or patients who are just struggling to be successful with more mainstream treatments. But you have to remember that for every possible benefit, there is a risk. And you want to have your benefit very significantly outweigh your risk, which means you have to actually think about the possibility of risk. Really, my goal of bringing this uh, PowerPoint to you is for you to have an awareness of the possibility of risk related to bacterial contamination so that you can factor this into your decision about whether or not to use a certain product. And thank you for your attention. I hope this has helped you in some way.